move closer. Okay, then.杨天展好大家好现在线上有十六位老师们在线上那我们的课大部分都一点半就必须来这边做一些准备然后讨论一下今天的课程我们这个课程到这个礼拜是第七周下个礼拜第八周下个礼拜到八七月二十几号课程就结束了但我们的各位在做的作业各位的作业可以从我跟各位讲这里有作业这个作业我先在屏幕上秀给各位看就是在我们的课程里面哦这个是我们的 g o o g l e Classroom g o o g l e Classroom 好我们大部分的人都在这个地方 在FV这里 大部分人都会到FV这个地方来 FV这里现在我加了很多软体 我跟各位说明这个都超棒的超棒的其实上这门课收益最大的应该是我不过因为我们开课以后我有一个礼拜在 f l i p p i n 然后有两个礼拜在帮在帮人家写一写一些资料所以我忙了大概其实都很忙啦等到因为课程快结束了所以我就在上面各位可以仔细看哦太多太多资料这个是一个 e n g l i s h in t h r e e m i n u t e s 它是系列的哦它是系列的的教材如果你要看他的教材我这边有有链接你再一点下去就可以看到他所有的教材点这个地方点这个地方他所有的课程的教材我都把它收入在这里了所以各位如果接下去要学学英文哈其实有太多太多你可以接触的好我把这个关掉然
但是我们真的在这个课程上面，差不多三百五十人，就是很很多老师他认为他不需要证书，但是如果你需要教育局那个实数认证，也就是六月十五号以前登录的，我们会送到教育局会认证你的研习实数。那这个东西，如果各位我们有精美的那个证书，现在正在制作，我们会到八月底就寄给各位。我想大家都可以拿到，大家都可以拿到。它很简单，它就是你去完成，你去完成我们这个课程。好，在这个这边有一个叫 assignment， which one assignment here this one？ 那这里有，请各位去念读，这个每一篇都有文章，你去念读，希望你到 Google Doc 念读。念读完了以后，它会产生一个 DOC 坏。我再跟各位提醒，其实这个就是 DOC 坏。如果你不想念读，你就请你把这个文章回传给我们就好了。哦，因为不是每一个人，因为我们本来是希望各位 repeat， 就是去 practice reading， 呃、uh, ，the the 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 article。所以我们第八篇的文章在这里哈、哦，这个大致是各位要做的。然后第二个就是我们希望各位有去阅读。阅读那个 YouTube 的影片，那 YouTube 的影片它会登录在你的 U 那个 ET Puzzle 的账户里面。那 ET Puzzle 我们现在全部都引进来了，所以每一个老师哈，如果你要看影片，你打这个影音，每一个老师应该都有了。现在你不需要去申请这个 ET Puzzle， 你不用申请，因为我已经都把你们灌进去了，所以你就去读。如果你有阅读完毕。好，我们到时候看时数，看时数。其实各位都不要太担心那个，你有看了，我们就把证书给你。反正尽量鼓励大家学习嘛。好，各位愿意来，我们已经都很高兴了。但是就是教育局的规定，我尽量遵守。好，教育局它其实是有一些要求的。好，那这个 ED p a d d l e 各位有看到哈，你就点这个 ED p a d d l e 它就会进入 ED p a d d l e 的影片里面了。这样各位了解哈。所以我们大概有两个作业给各位做，这个就是已经完成阅读的。都完成阅读的啊！我们现在有两百七十八个人已经进来了，其实有三百多了，有三百多。我在这个都已经有三百多，应该有三百三了。好、哦，好，那没有问题，我们就尽量哈、哦。再讲一次哦，我们有准备证书要给各位，希望各位就是有上传两个作业，一个就是阅读文章哈、哦，然后一个我们一直到八月三十一，还有很多时间，还有很多时间啊。我们另外一个就是读那个文章。读那个文章哈，啊，读文章，如果你不想读，你就把 DOC 丢给我们就好了哈。那主要的目的还是鼓励各位学习。那我们不想把各位分英文是好的，或者是英文不好的。好，那课程开始前，我想叫 Matthew 来跟各位说一下 Hello 啊，然后他说今天的课程要先各位看看我们上一周的 Seattle 的 video。那上一周的 Seattle 的 video， 各位现在可以看到上面的影音有有一则，哦，我再把它 copy 一次，因为等一下他，我等一下有些人他会刷版嘛，哈、哦，刷版，好、哦，我现在又贴上来了，这个就是 Seattle 那一个 video， 哦， Seattle 的 video， 那各位可能就可以点这个去看了，我先先让那个 Matthew 跟大家说几句话，叫 say hello。Yeah， okay， hi everybody， good afternoon， glad to be back here with you this week。Uh, I think today is an especially good day to be inside on your computer studying English because the weather outside is quite bad. <laughs> so no excuses.、Uh, so yeah, like Professor Wen said, we're gonna start the lesson this week with、uh, a video from last week.、I'm、gonna ask you guys to、uh, watch the video and then just in our chat room here after you watch the video. Um, you know, tell Professor One and I、um, maybe something that you can do or some place that you can go in Seattle. Anything that grabbed your attention about the video, just let us know. Okay. 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 全屏幕，你把它点下去，它就当它就变成全屏幕，那屏幕会清楚一点。可是当你在看全屏幕的时候，右边的那个 interaction 就没有了。那我刚才要登录这个 Google Hangout 的时候，吓了一跳，很大跳。他说八月一号这一个服务终止，八月一号这个服务终止，我吓一大跳。我有很多课程在用，美国都菲律宾的课程，还有
，还有 Scratch 的课程跟 Python 的课程，所以我们要很快的转过来哈。不过今天刚好刚才才看到，他说八月一号这一个服务会停止。那这个服务是什么服务呢 ？Actually， 它是一个 streaming，YouTube 负责做 video 的 streaming。那它交给那个那个 Google Hangout 做 c o d e c k c o d e c k 就是 coder 跟 decoder。那现在 c o d e c k 它叫我们自己做，我们要找第三方的 OBS， 好像是 OBS， 好像是叫 Online Broadcasting System or Station。I don't know. I forget that. 不过我会准备的，我我是一个蛮 technician man 的，所以回来我会去，就是说我们这个课程刚好刚刚好会不会影响到，但其他的课程我必须要有一个接续，有很多方法可以做选择。好，今天的很多人哦，刚才那个刚才 Matthew 带的六个小礼物，对不对 ？Yes， yeah, 我不跟你讲，我们要抽六个人，我会想办法送到呢，送到你那里。哦，不管你在天涯海角，我会把这个礼物送到。我知道我们的学员是 all over the island。那 anyway， 我会把这个东西送到送到你的这个眼前去哈。等一下我才来开讲，因为我们很好，我们最后这两个两个那个 speaker 都有带些小的那个 gift 要给你们。我觉得重点不在 gift 有多好多坏，而是嗯，他至少有心啊。温老师还要必须去处理这些方法哈。好，那我们现在就要 let's start reading the Seattle. Yes, let's watch the video, and then, like I said, after we finish watching it, just、uh, let us know something that grabbed your attention. Tell us something you can do or some place you can go in Seattle. 好，他说希望各位能够，他想抓住各位的这个注注意力。你现在，请你好好去看这个影片。那我们这边也会同步播出，它只有五分钟，五分钟哦。然后 ，Do you have any question you want to ask them? And I tell them to concentrate on what kind of question you will ask them. Hmm. Well, let me try to remember the content of the video quickly. Maybe it introduced the place. Yeah, sightseeing place. Uh, does it introduce the culture? The culture of culture. Seattle a little bit. I guess maybe. Uh, for those of you who don't know, who weren't tuned in last week, Seattle is my hometown. Um, so I know quite a bit about it. I guess maybe a question I'll ask、okay. is, is maybe uh, um, okay, specific okay, specific question. What is the, the what is the name of Seattle's most famous market? 它最著名的呃最有名的市场叫什么名称？ Mm. 我记得我记得 Seattle 有一个好像是波音的那个公司还是什么在那里？是不是 ？I forget. There's、Which、a、one? tower, like Boeing seven forty. Boeing is that there? Boeing is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boeing so Boeing 的公司在那里，我记得了哈。嗯。因为我曾经，因为美国的西岸进关大概只有两个嘛，一个 Seattle， 一个 Los Angeles。所以我去美国念书的时候，都是不是 down in the south end of San Francisco, Los Angeles, or in the north in the Seattle. 好啊，那那个城市是一个非常优雅的城市，很老的城市。Anyway， 各位仔细看，我们等一下会会问你问题，各位就点我给你的链接哦。I will give you six minutes to read it. Okay. Oh, let's here, go. Here we go. <音樂>各位尽量从你自己那里说。Seattle is about 100 miles south of the Canadian border on the west coast of the United States. It is a lush, evergreen city lying between Puget Sound and Lake Washington, with abundant parklands and surrounded by towering mountains and forests. Widely known for its overcast weather, when the sun does come out, the spectacular beauty of the waterways, forests, and distant mountains combine to make Seattle one of the most stunning cities in the U.S. Classic architecture. Leafy public squares and wide, breezy streets make exploring downtown Seattle a fun experience. For great views of the city, visit the observation deck on the 35th floor of Smith Tower, or see some of Seattle's oldest buildings in nearby Pioneer Square. A distinctive feature of downtown is the Seattle waterfront, which is famous for eateries and seafood restaurants. As well as being a launching point for pleasure craft cruising the Sound, ferries depart regularly, so jump aboard to get a unique view of the city. 
Container ships and cruise liners also share these waterways, and the busy harbor is a constant reminder of Seattle's maritime heritage. Alki Beach in West Seattle is a great spot to enjoy the warmer weather. On sunny days, many locals enjoy the miles of shorefront beaches, relaxed parklands, and spectacular views of Puget Sound and the Olympic Mountains. Back in downtown, it's just a short but steep climb from the waterfront to the lively Pike Place Market. Here you can sample some of the freshest catches from the waters of the Pacific Northwest and also chat to local producers who harvest and sell the goods on display. The market has many bars and eateries, stalls and souvenir shops, as well as America's first Starbucks store. Wherever you go in Seattle, you're never far from the water. Puget Sound is to the west, Lake Washington is to the east, and to the north is Lake Union, whose eye-catching floating homes were made famous in the movie Sleepless in Seattle. Further to the north, the popular Woodland Park Zoo is home to more than a thousand animals and birds in habitats ranging from the African savanna to tropical forests. Located at Boeing Field, about 15 minutes drive from downtown, is the Seattle Museum of Flight. This amazing museum displays air and spacecraft from the earliest Wright Brothers flyer to modern jet. For the most famous views of Seattle, head over to Cary Park on the south side of Queen Anne Hill. The park is not far from the Seattle Center, so it's the perfect spot to see the famous Space Needle in all its glory, especially when the sun goes down. The city has been home to many world-famous bands, and there's no shortage of live music in Seattle, as well as bars and nightclubs partying well into the early hours. The Seattle Center is home to the Pacific Science Center and the popular International Fountain, as well as Seattle's most recognized landmark, the Space Needle. From the 520-foot high observation deck, you'll have superb views of the city, and if the weather is clear, you can see all the way out to Mount Rainier. On a clear day, the snow-covered peak dominates the Seattle skyline, and it can be seen from all parts of the city. The Mount Rainier National Park has hundreds of miles of hiking trails that lead through a variety of different landscapes. The ancient Grove of Patriarchs is home to giants up to 1,000 years old, and the raised boardwalk makes it one of the easiest walks in the park. If you don't feel like walking, there are several scenic drives, including one that encircles the mountain itself. Mount Rainier is not the only natural wonder close by, and Olympic National Park is just a few hours' drive west of the city. Here, the hauntingly beautiful Ho Rainforest is like entering another world, where moss and lichens grow on every surface. Further to the west, Ruby Beach is possibly Washington State's most scenic beach, with rocky sea stacks just off the coast and a shore strewn with driftwood. One of North America's most beautiful cities, Seattle has a perpetually optimistic outlook. Whether you're exploring the countryside or in the heart of downtown, what makes Seattle so special is the incredible variety of experiences you'll find in the Emerald City. So I can see a couple answers coming in already. Several people have answered the question correctly, which is, of course, the most famous market in Seattle is the market that's right down on the waterfront, Pike Place Market, where you can buy all kinds of stuff. Um, how many people answered this question correctly? One, two, yeah. two three. three. Very good, very good, very good. Yes. So. Uh, I'm curious, has anyone who's tuned into our broadcast right now, have you ever been to Seattle before? 
，有多少人曾经去过西雅图？如果去过的话，可以写。啊 ，Yes I do。嗯 ，I have been there。好，如果有去过的话， yeah. 好多人都有答案呢。哈，就是他问的就是。嗯，这个叫 pig market， pike place market， pike, okay， pike， pike， the pike place pike market. market， yes，、pike、and、place. if you haven't been to Seattle， I would definitely recommend you go and check it out. However， I will say definitely go in the summertime. Don't go in the winter time. It's really. 他说夏天可以去，冬天不要去。No， it's really in the winter time. It's not pleasant. It's very cold, very wet, and it's very dark. But the summertime is lovely. 冬天湿又冷。嗯，不适合我们去。夏天是一个很好的地方。Okay, so I think、um, we should probably get into today's lesson. All right. So do you want to introduce this this place? Yes. Well, we have we have seen the picture, like Boeing Field. Sure. Space needle. Yes. Needle and also have um. Let me see that. The the mountain there, the oh, yeah, Olympic yeah, yeah. National Mountain. Okay. And have the tree, the mountain with the snow covered on the top.、Mm -hmm. And it says the Seattle Center. Yes. And Boeing Field. Yes. And also talk about the market. And also I saw the Starbucks is there. That is true. The original Starbucks location is、uh, just next to Pike Place Market. It's actually in the market, really.、Um, Starbucks is from Seattle, as well as a lot of other famous companies, like、uh, Professor Wen mentioned, the Boeing Company. Microsoft is from Seattle. Amazon is from Seattle.、Um, also, the company that produced that video, Expedia, which is a large travel company, is also from Seattle. So you can go to the first Starbucks if you visit Seattle. However, I'll tell you, you should plan on waiting in line for probably up to sixty to ninety minutes to、oh, get in the store because there are a lot, you, lot of people. You want to enter Seattle? Starbucks is not like Taiwan. Taiwan, you just walk in. In there, you have to wait for a long time. He said, "For a long time, for a long time." 但我听了吓一跳，我不敢说。他说那个是很长很长，我一定，因为他是总店。It's a it's a quite a long time to wait for a cup of coffee, you know, and it's they also the crap is big and cheap cheaper there. Uh, cheaper I don't know, I'm not sure, the but those empire they call empire crab crab. The large crabs that you saw there are the they call the Alaskan king crabs. Alaskan king oh king、yeah. crab king crab 帝王蟹 They're actually quite expensive. So yeah, some of the other places you saw in the video um are like the Space Needle, which is that. Building you saw that's shaped like this,、um, very famous Seattle landmark. What else did we see?、Um, 那个西雅西雅图 Needle 是一个地标。嗯哼，我我有看到那个西雅图夜未眠，好像那个影片在那里拍的。Do you know the movie says? Um,、uh, 我不知道英文怎么说了，我们都翻中文。I think you're probably talking about Sleepless in Seattle. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Have you been watch? The the movie. Uh, I saw the movie maybe ten years. God, I don't know. Maybe fifteen years ago. Fifteen years ago. Maybe fifteen years ago. I don't really remember、okay. it. Okay. How? Let's continue on with our. Let's get into our lesson today because we actually only have an hour left. So an hour. Uh, today, um, I'm going to be talking to you about some. Kind of some strategies for improving your English reading, and then also sharing some resources that you can use to practice your reading. 好，他要介绍你改进英文阅读的方法，而且会介绍你一些资源，嗯，一些工具，阅读工具。Okay, so last week I did listening. This week I'm doing reading. Okay. 上个礼拜我们是听力，这个礼拜我们是阅读。Okay, so. Let's begin today just by clearing up or getting a better understanding of why reading is so important to your English ability. Well, because it's one of the three skills that creates 100% of your English ability, along with listening and speaking.、Um, I think reading has some special characteristics. One of them is that it's really, really helpful 
in helping you to master pronunciation, which means saying a word in the correct way. Um, this is something in English that's really actually quite difficult um, to master pronunciation, but I feel like if your reading skills are strong, um, you're have a better ability to guess correctly how a word is pronounced. Um, also, of course, reading can make, you know, things like written communication and travel much easier. You know, if you travel to an English speaking country, the better your reading skill, the more you can understand information that you see, read newspapers, travel brochures, um, informative signs, visiting museums, obviously very helpful, okay? And then the last thing is, in my opinion, I think when you're learning any language and definitely when you're learning English, reading is the best, the number one way to pick up new vocabulary. Because if you are reading something, if you see a word or a phrase that you don't understand, it's right there in front of you, it's written down, you can write it down in your notebook or Google it right away and then if you can manage to remember, you got a new piece of vocabulary. Listening and speaking, these三个几乎能够控制你百分之百的沟通的沟通能力 pick up the new vocabulary 然后还有这个 他刚才好像有提到 pronunciation yes. and also the ability to read English opens up a word of possibility. Yes, that's very true. Anyway, there are two things. Let's break it down. Breathing is important. But Yes, okay. I think, I think uh, picking up new vocabulary is really the most important part. Um, I definitely know when uh, for example, when I first started learning uh, how to speak Chinese, I really focused much more on my speaking and listening, and I didn't really focus very much on reading. One reason is because reading Chinese is <laughs> really difficult. Um, don't have an alphabet like we have in English. But actually, once I started focusing more on learning how to read Chinese and really trying to develop my reading ability, it, I really did almost feel kind of like the living here in Kaohsiung, like the world around me just started like, I don't know, almost like revealing secrets or something, being able to walk down the street and say, oh my God, I can read that sign. I know what that means or I know what that business does or something. It's really... Mm -hmm. 所以看字要懂那个单字是很重要的。Okay, mm. let's continue. Uh, okay, the next thing I'm going to cover in this next part of my presentation is uh, four tips for improving your reading. And after we go through these tips, I think I'm going to ask uh, our audience a question after reviewing each one. And then after we get through these four tips, we're going to actually do some reading practice today, and I'm going to introduce you some resources that you can use to improve your reading ability. For reading improvement. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm going to go through each one. So the first one is making special time to practice your reading. Um, now, in my personal experience, I've also found this to be very important when you're trying to learn how to read another language. So uh, my recommendation would be to sort of make reading uh, what we call a ritual, which is that word you can see uh, in the first line, the R-I-T-U-A-L, that word is ritual. Um, and what a ritual is, is it's, uh, it's a series of actions or something that you do um, 
that you do it the same way every single time. It's like a, oftentimes we use the word ritual when we're talking about like a religion or something like that, like a church service or something. But a ritual just really means like a, it's kind of like habit, but like stronger. You know, it's something you do the exact same way every single time. So, for example, you know, some people have, uh, you know, what we call your morning ritual, which means when you wake up, what are the first five things that you do? You know, and you usually do it the same way every time. So my recommendation to you is make your reading into a ritual. Make it into a very habit-like process, okay? So uh, my tips for being able to accomplish this are find a quiet, comfortable place with good light, okay? So um, people like to read in different places. Some people like to read you know, on the couch, some people like to read in bed, some people like to read at a desk or a table. Everyone's different. Uh, me personally, I like reading in my chair with my dog on my lap. Um, before you sit down to practice your reading, I would recommend you get everything that you need before you sit down. Make sure you're very well prepared. So, for example, that might be your pen and your notebook, if that's how you write down new vocabulary. Uh, a dictionary, if you use a paper dictionary, I think most people these days probably use dictionaries on their phone or on their tablet. Um, and I also always think it's nice to practice your reading, have something to drink, um, whatever you like, water. I personally really like drinking coffee when I read. And that reminds me of my gift that I brought today. Oh, for... today he has a gift. He has a gift for everyone. So this is my gift. Okay, this is a six pack. However, uh, this is not beer. This is um, in English. No, it's not. Although you can drink beer while you're reading. It's quite nice, really. Um, but this is not beer. This is uh, in English what we call like a just a malt drink. M A L T malt drink. M A L T. Yeah. M A L T. Just like just just a hey my zil. Hey my god. Mm, it's really good. Yeah. I actually, I bought this yesterday, and I also bought myself a six pack okay. and had one yesterday. Ha ha, 太棒了。嗯，我们谢谢他啊，谢谢他。等一下，我们要抽奖哦。Okay. So getting back to the lesson. Uh, I would also say when you're practicing your reading, it's really important to take your electronics, so things like your cell phone or your tablet or whatever, and put them on silent and put them to the side. Because when you're practicing your reading, it's very important to not be distracted. And that's another vocabulary word you can see there in bold, which um, if you're distracted, just what that means is you're not paying enough attention to what you should be paying attention to. You're distracted by other things. And I think probably, as all of you know, your cell phone is probably the most distracting thing in your life. So when you practice your reading, I recommend you take your phone, turn it on silent, and put it to the side. Okay? And then the last point for making special time to read is I recommend whenever you practice your reading, read for at least 30 minutes. Um, I think probably more like an hour is best, um, but practicing your reading for 5, 10, 15 minutes, I, I don't think is sufficient. I, I think uh, 30 minutes should be your minimum target for when you're practicing your reading. Um, because I do think when you're doing this, it takes a little while to get into it, to really get into the, the text that you're studying. So I say 30 minute minimum. Okay, and then I have a question for all of you, which is, if you read, and I'm not only talking about reading English or practicing your English reading, if you read at all, you know, read books, read newspapers, wherever, where is your reading place? Where do you like to read, okay? So just tell us in our chat uh, where your reading place is. I'm actually quite curious about this, so I'll look forward to your answers. 他现在很希望各位想一下，你认为最适合你阅读的地方在哪里？
哦，他现在题目白色那个就这样，哪一个是最你适合阅读的地方？他刚才有提到，如果你要阅读的时候，最好要花花三十分钟，然后请你手机关掉。他说那个是会让你不专心的一个东西，但如果你是刚好用手机在读，就无所谓了哈。很多人就是 mobile learning， 所以除了你在做做做阅读以外，好，开始吧，想一想哪里最好。Library， living room， in the library。Anywhere. Someone says anywhere. <laughs> good, 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 good. I read on couch. Read on the couch or on the bed. Couch or in bed. the living room. In the library. I wonder if they mean they have a library in their house or if they go to the public library. I think of what it means a public library. Yeah, I think the library. Or school library. Maybe. I think the library is a really great place to read. It's always quiet, and not too many distractions. Anywhere <laughs> in my room, in my studying room. Ooh, you have a special studying room all to yourself. That's quite nice. In my study, in the library, on my sofa, I read in my study room. In my study room. Okay, very good. So it sounds actually like the people who are tuned in here, you guys do quite a bit of reading, which I'm glad to hear. Okay. Let's continue on to the next point. My next tip for increasing your reading ability.、Um, this next tip is with anything that you are reading to improve your English reading ability. Try to ask yourself a lot of questions and try to be actively curious about what you're reading. Okay.、Um, Asking yourself questions is a really great method to make sure that you're getting the most out of your reading practice.、Um, if you are not actively asking yourself questions or not really actively engaging with the material that you're reading, then you're not going to benefit from reading it as much as you would if you are actively asking questions. So I recommend before you read something, whether it's A news article or a chapter in a book or whatever. Ask yourself questions before, during, and after you read.、Um, I think even something that you can do, let's say before you read a news article, for example, you can read the title. You can look very quickly at the article, and then you can try to think of three questions to ask yourself. By the time you finish reading the news article,、uh, sort of just guess what kind of information you're going to read.、Um, this is an activity that I do often with my students who are studying for their IELTS exam,、um, and it's quite useful in getting you to read closely. You say IELTS? What is that? IELTS is the I IELTS? No, not an IELTS. Not an IELTS. The IELTS is a I E L T S test. Which is the international English language、yes. testing system? I believe that's what it stands <laughs> for. It's a standardized English test that is administered by the British Council, and for a lot of students who want to study abroad, either in the UK or in Australia or New Zealand or Canada. A lot of universities in those countries will require you to have an IELTS score, usually of about anywhere from 5.5 to 6.5. 英国领事馆有在推动这个 IELTS 的测验，所以他说，比如说他在教学生或者在他们练习 IELTS test 的时候，他都会教他们去做这样。他就自己问自己一些问题。他说叫你先快看 title， 然后 quickly review the article， then ask。To yourself, three questions. You ask three questions, and then you try to guess. First, guess what the content of the article will be. Hmm. Okay. And then the last tip I have here about asking questions and being curious is、uh, keep a notebook close to you to write down words and phrases that you don't know or don't understand.、Um, I know some people also like to use like、uh, what we call the sticky notes, the post-it notes, to write down vocabulary.、Um, I don't like that method myself because I always lose the sticky notes and then <laughs> I can't I can't study them.、Uh, I personally like to use a notebook、um, to write down new words that I'm not familiar with. 
and you know, to be quite honest with you, um, I even myself being a native English speaker, I encounter words oh, probably, I would say probably every probably every week or two. I will be reading something and I'll see a word that I really don't know exactly what it means. So I even keep a notebook myself of new English vocabulary. 他刚才有提到几个点抱歉因为有些人他会回来review 那我现在在教学的时候我都说那他说他有时候也会用这个好就是即使美国人还是会有单字不懂的地方但是他们还是会把它想办法把这些单字记起来 so those are my tips for asking questions and being curious about what you read um, especially anytime you're reading something and there's a word that you don't understand or a phrase that you don't understand don't skip over it write it down and search for it later really can't recommend that strongly enough okay so I have another question for you guys now which is when you are actively studying English or if you're just sort of casually reading something in English if you find a word or find a phrase that you don't understand where do you write it down and what do you do with it um, for example do you write it down in a notebook? Do you use post-it notes? Do you write it down in the notes function on your phone? Do you write it on your hand? I don't know. When you find a new word, where do you write it down? Okay, I see some answers coming in already. People are saying my notebooks, card, notebook. Uh, I think I understand this one, the fluorescent, fluorescent pen. pen drawing. What they're talking about is um, in English what we call a highlighter. Highlighter. Mm. In Guangbi. <laughs> yeah, a highlighter. Okay, so it looks like most of you are saying that you write down new vocabulary in a notebook, which is... <laughs> okay, this person who is that? Huang Lemon, note paper, but always forget it. Yeah. I totally understand. Learning new vocabulary is really is quite difficult. Difficult to keep it in your head. Mobile phone, notebook. Okay, very good. How about you, Professor? Where do you write down Me, new vocabulary? I'm quite a hardworking student. You know, when I learn the English, <laughs> I keep watching, you know, I bring my cell phone. And if I have the words I don't know, I say check it soon. Mm. Just have, like what you say, richer, then I will check it mm. using my cell phone or anywhere if I not make sure, then I'll start. That's the way you know. I okay. got to keep this kind of habit. Okay. Uh, I also see a couple answers here talking about a translation app and vocabulary app. Um, which that's good. Uh, in my presentation a little bit later, I'm going to be, we're going to watch a video about some language learning apps. And then I'm also going to be telling you about the app that I use. Um, also small language point. I know in Taiwan, everyone says APP, uh, but in English we say, we just say app, um, because it's app is actually short for application. So we just, we don't say APP, we say app. Okay. Continuing on, uh, my next point is when you're studying English text, read it again. Don't only read something one time. Um, this is a, quote, a quotation you can see on the top from a, 
a man who's named Ezra Pound. Ezra Pound uh, is a very famous American poet. Um, he's dead now. I also say I personally am not a big fan of his poetry, but I do like this quotation a lot where he says, no reader ever read anything the first time that he saw it, which just kind of means the first time that you read something, uh, you're not going to get a full understanding of the text, especially if you're challenging yourself and trying to read something that's maybe a bit above your level. Um, so I would say if you're doing that, you should really read text maybe three or four times because every time you reread something, uh, you will find something new. Uh, maybe you'll find a new vocabulary word that you skipped the first time you read it. Um, you might uh, gain some new meaning or some new understanding reading in a third or fourth time. Um, and I even do this myself, particularly with books that I really enjoy. I'll read a book, uh, you know, I'll read it. If I really like it, I'll put it back on my bookshelf and maybe a year later, or 18 months later, I'll read it again and I'll get something new out of it every time I read it. Um, and there are some books that I've read probably maybe maybe even up to five or six times because I like them so much and feel like I get something new out of them every time I read them. So that's the third tip is uh, you should don't only read something once, read it many, many times, especially if you're reading for study. read it again. 每一件事当然你看第一次的时候也许你看第二次是很无聊的但你一定可以找到一些新的事物或新的观点所以他希望各位其实不指定 uh, the last point, last little tip that I have for your reading is just read uh, a wide variety of texts. Read as many different kinds of things as you can. Don't only read the news. Uh, don't only read um, like uh, reading textbooks or any kind of teaching material that you have. You know, try to read different news websites. Try to maybe find an English blog about something that you're interested in, whether that's cooking, travel, sports, whatever. Uh, also, websites, when you're, when you're surfing the internet or something like that, most websites will have uh, language options. Click on the English, see if you can navigate the website in English. You might learn something new, learn some new words or something. Um, the next one, uh, subtitles, subtitles, which is uh, subtitles, I think are a really, really excellent way of improving your whole English ability, really. Um, I watch uh, TV, Taiwanese TV shows that I don't even, I'm not even interested in them. I don't even like them, but I um, like uh, soap operas, for example. You know, soap opera, like a drama, mm -hmm. you know, the, my wife will be watching them on TV or something, and I don't have any interest in them, but I'll watch them and I'll read the dialogue. I'll read the subtitles on the bottom of the screen. You say soft to barra. Subtitles. Okay, subtitles. Subtitles. We're going to watch a video in a minute with some subtitles. Yeah, or a movie or TV show, video, whatever. I think subtitles are really, really useful. Okay, and then if your ability is strong enough, I really recommend you read some English books. I, I realize these days, not, I feel like not so many people read books anymore, which I think is kind of sad, but if you, if you can, I really recommend you read books. And of course, magazines are great as well. Okay? So, mm, so those are my four tips uh, for reading. And now I think we should get into talking about some resources and also doing some practice. Okay? 
But I have one question I want to ask you uh, before we continue. And that question is, what do you read most often? And what I mean is, what kinds of things do you read? Do you read news most often? Do you read magazines most often? Is there an English blog that you read every day or something? I'm curious, what kind of, what kind of English material are you reading most often? 你们大致上都是读哪些读物比较常读的？我记得我们在台湾那个字我们叫often，老师教我们的。可是那时候我从影片里面他就念often，那刚才我们看世修老师他念的就是often。那其实在台湾有很多老师教的是often。I don't know is that correct or not. Often? Yes, mm -hmm. they say often, but, but as I heard from the video, most of the speakers, they're using often. Well, if you're going to pronounce it very correctly, okay. you should say often. 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 No. Yeah. often. often. But, um, you know, Americans, we, we're not famous for having the the best pronunciation in the English speaking world. So yeah, we, we get a little bit lazy with our pronunciation sometimes. So, so sometimes we might say often. Yeah. How do you hear and do here? Oh, well, okay. that's the old kind of. Let's see, I see news, news, magazines, websites, news, news, books, more magazines, more websites. Oh, cartoons. I think, uh, you know, I think Reading the subtitles on cartoons is actually quite a good way um, because it's not super difficult dialogue to understand um, and you can always pick up something new. And also in cartoons, they use very, uh, how should I say, very, what we, in English, what we call colloquial language, which just means very everyday speaking. Colloquial, just a colloquial. Mm. Okay, subtitles, websites, songs, books, magazines, picture books. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Okay, let's continue. Uh, so, this little activity we're going to do is about reading subtitles. So, if you don't know what subtitles are, subtitles are just the words that you see on the bottom of the screen when you're watching a show or a movie that are the text of what the people are saying. That's the subtitles, okay? Um, so, we're going to watch uh, a short YouTube video that is um, it's English news for people who are learning English. So, the the host, that woman, she's going to speak a little bit more slowly than a standard news broadcast. Um, and you can also read the subtitles on the bottom of the screen. Now, before we watch this video, and while you're watching this, I, uh, I want you to focus on the subtitles and not so much listening to what she says. I have three reading questions for you before we watch this video. So as you can see, the first question is, what is the most popular subject for international students in the U.S.? This question means students who are coming from other countries to study in the United States. What is the most popular subject for these students? The second question is, what is the second most popular? That means, what's the second most popular subject for these international students? And the third question is, um, this is a very specific vocabulary question. The third question says, uh, a business student in South Africa said, English is a lifeline. And I want to know, what do you think this means? The question really is, what is a lifeline? What does that mean, that word, lifeline? Okay, so those are the three questions for watching this video. This video is four minutes long. So Professor Wen and I will start watching the video here now, and you can answer any of these three questions in our chat room. Maybe when you answer, you should just um, note what question you're answering. So for example, write, if you wanna answer question one, write Q1 and then your answer, or Q2 and then your answer, something like this. 
。哦，我想上面有中有英文，各位都可以知道他的问题。第一个是 What is the most popular subject for international students in the United States？ 在美国国际学生他们最喜欢的主题是什么阅读的主题？嗯，第二个是 What is the second most popular？ 这影片里面可能有讲。那第三个就是 business student in South Africa， 所以在南美的那个诶商业类科的学生，嗯，他们说 English is lifeline。What do you think this means？ 什么是 English is a lifeline？、Yeah. 哦，我也不知道。好，那各位可以去看你的影片哦，哈。他这影片大致上他说好像是五分钟，四分钟，四分钟啊。那各位，你你看我们的话，声音可能没那么清楚。你可以想办法哈，就是自己去阅读，但我知道这有困难，因为我们这边如果在播，声音也会干扰到你那里。不过我知道你们都很厉害的，你们知道如果是控制你的技巧，好，有一个方法就是把我们的那个屏幕先收起来，然后你 copy 那个 line 后，自己用那个呃 YouTube 去去播放。OK， anyway， 你们去去念就对了。OK， let's watch the video。I'm Alex Villarreal with the VOA Special English Economics Report. Business is the most popular subject for international students in the United States. At last count, 21% of foreign students at American colleges and universities were studying business and management. The Institute of International Education in New York says engineering is the second most popular field. In case you were wondering, Thomas Kose is a professor of marketing and business at the University of Richmond in Virginia. He says international students who want to study business need to have good English skills, and not just to study at his school. But the world has more non-native speakers of English than native speakers. As a result, Americans working with foreign companies may need to learn some new English skills themselves. At the University of Richmond, teams of graduate students work with companies seeking to enter the American market. The students learn about writing market entry studies. The reports are written in English, but Professor Kose tells his students to consider who will read them. He said his students have to write the report so that it can be understood by someone who is an English speaker but not a native English speaker. For example, he tells his students to avoid jargon and other specialized terms that people might not know in their own language. This can be good advice. Even when writing for other native speakers, but effective communication involves more than just words. Kay Westerfield is director of the International Business Communication Program at the University of Oregon. She says you must have the language skills as well as cultural intelligence. Cultural intelligence means the need to consider local behaviors in everything from simple handshakes to speaking to large groups. Still, Kay Westerfield says the ability of foreign workers to speak English is becoming more important to companies looking to move operations to other countries, or, as she puts it. To offsource. Also, she says English skills often provide a competitive edge for business students when they seek jobs. She said, as one business student in West Africa put it, 
English is a lifeline. For VOA Special English, I'm Alex Villarreal. You can read and listen to our programs and find activities for English learners at voaspecialenglish.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter at VOA Learning English. Okay, everyone, before I go back to my PowerPoint, I just want to show you here, uh, there are many, many of these videos. If you found this interesting or if you found this useful, this VOA Learning English. VOA is Voice of America, which is a, a news service from the United States. So if you're interested in watching these kinds of English news videos where she speaks a little more slowly and you can also read the subtitles, as you can see, there's a bunch of them on YouTube, really a lot of them that you can watch. Okay, so that resource is there for you on YouTube. Okay, so let's wait for some of your answers to come back into these three questions. Tourism. Tourism. Yeah. Tourism. I think. Is that I, it? The first one? Probably I, not. I think they guessed the answer they to guessed. the question before they watched the video. <laughs> the, the correct <laughs> answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. You all got it right. Okay. So it looks like all of you are getting it correct. The most popular subject for international students in the U.S. is business and management, business and management studies, which are actually, you know, popular all over the world. I got my master's in business management too here in Taiwan. Okay, so very good. So how about... The second one. What was the second most popular? And also, you can answer any question you want right now. I'm also, I'm also very curious about what you think a lifeline is. What is a lifeline? Mm. Ti 都在這裡面。好,我們正確答案都出來了哦。就是engineering。嗯。Yes, 那课程结束以后，我会把它通通移到我们的讨论板里面的，会在正式课程里面的。所以感谢各位这一次的配合哈。Okay, so let's talk about now what is a lifeline. Uh, a student said, or the reporter said in the video, that the student described English as a lifeline. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, it's a piece of English vocabulary that can be useful to you in the future. Uh, if we say something is a lifeline, what we mean is that it's something we really, really depend on to help us out of difficult situations, or it's something that is absolutely necessary or essential for us to have, okay? So, um, 
the business student was describing English skills as being something that they really, really depend on to help them find a job or something that's absolutely necessary for them to enter the job market. Um, I'll give another example, more local example here in Kaohsiung. Uh, I know um, when I was studying at Dongsan uh, Dashui, a lot of the exchange students who came from other countries, when they first came to Taiwan, they could not speak any Chinese. So for them, the, the, the taxi service Uber for them was a lifeline because they couldn't speak any Chinese, so they couldn't tell taxi drivers where they needed to go. So for them, Uber was a lifeline. Lifeline的他在自典里面找到的解释就写在这里了什么是Lifeline最简单的就是生命线的 所以他们每一次要出门都要叫Uber,那Uber就是他们的生命线。Yeah, mm. and I, th I, think we, I think we all have things in our life that are our lifeline, things we really, really depend on, okay? So anyway, that's a, a new, new piece of vocabulary for you. If you already knew that vocabulary, good for you, and if you didn't know it, uh, Try to write it down in your notebook or wherever you write it down and use it in the future. We This is a piece of vocabulary I would say, uh, Americans at least, we use this quite often. Describe something as a lifeline. Okay, let's continue. Uh, another resource I'm going to share with you is just using uh, what are called listening tracks, which um, using those with subtitles. So you're doing something similar that we did with the last video, but uh, in this, you're not actually seeing a person speak. You're just listening to the words and seeing them spelled out on the screen, okay? Um, so the YouTube link that we're gonna share with you, um, this uh, video is very, long. It's two hours long. So please don't watch the whole thing right now. <laughs> I just want you to listen to the first reading passage, which you can see here on your screens, reading passage one, which is from the beginning of the video to one minute and 50 seconds. That's the only part I want you to listen to. Okay. Um, now this service, this Boston English, um, they have a lot of these kind of videos on YouTube that just allow you to use the listening tracks with subtitles talking about a variety of different subject matter, okay? Um, so I think some of you could find this useful. And the listening tracks are also short. Most of them are under two minutes, so you can listen to different things and hopefully not get bored with your reading practice, okay? So um, the listening passage, or pardon me, the reading passage we're going to do right now is just describing neighborhood, which is, you know, in English, the word neighborhood we use just means the area around your home, just immediately around where you live, okay? Um, so listen to the track, read the subtitles, like I said, it's until a minute and 50 seconds. And then uh, after you watch it, I would like you to answer the two questions that they give you at the beginning of the video, which is the first question is, would you rather live in the town or in the countryside? Now, when we say in the town, we mean like in a town or in a city, you know, like, Kaohsiung, for example, or my hometown of Seattle. We, when we, in English, when we say in town, we just mean not the countryside, okay? And then the second question is, how clean and tidy is your neighborhood? Which just means the area around your home, how clean and tidy is it, okay? So 
Uh, the reading and listening section is one minute and 50 seconds long. So we'll watch it here also, and we'll give everybody about two minutes, and then we'll start receiving your answers. 我已经给各位这个链接了。这个链接，他说将近两小时，你不要通过看完，你只要看前面，开始到一分五十秒，大约两分钟。然后他有两个问题，第一个问题是你喜欢住在当场在 town 或者是 in the country 上乡间或者乡下哈。第二 ，how clean and Tidy, tidy, 清洁，整齐，整洁。Is your neighborhood? 你的邻居，你们的附近有多清洁，多整洁？嗯。Okay, here we go. But my town does not have these problems. Your neighborhood. Before you read, one, would you rather live in the town or the countryside? Two, how clean and tidy is your neighborhood? Reading passage one. This passage compares life in a village with life in a town. My grandmother lives in a small village. Where everyone knows everyone else. She's lived there happily all her life. She loves the peace and quiet of the countryside. I prefer living in the town. I like all the noise and activity of urban life. There is a lot of traffic, but it does not bother me. I find it interesting to see all the different types of vehicles that use the roads. The crowds on the pavements do not bother me either. I would feel lonely if I only saw one or two people as I walked along the street. My grandmother says that the countryside is much cleaner. There is no litter on the ground and no graffiti on the buildings. But my town does not have these problems either. All its inhabitants, young and old, are proud of the place where they live. It is a tidy and attractive town, and we want it to stay that way. We do not drop things on the ground or paint words and pictures on the walls. Reading passage two. Okay, that's that. Okay, so we'll await your answers to these two questions. How about you, Professor? You prefer to live、Me? in the town or in the countryside? Both do have their advantages. Both do have、yes. their advantages. Yes, in the city, it's more convenient、mm -hmm. for people to to go around the city, to go shopping, to go hospital or public、mm -hmm. resources. In the countryside, you can enjoy the greenery, scenery, and the peace and quiet、mm. and fresh air. Yes. Okay. Okay. I also see we have an answer coming in. 希望各位回答 I, I like the town because of convenience. I like the countryside because release of life. I think what they're talking about is maybe releasing some stress. You feel less stress in the countryside. I like living in the town. 乡下可以解放压力 Hmm. I prefer town because I need internet. <laughs> okay, I think they have internet in the countryside. The countryside yeah, of、yes. course, the town is more clean and convenient. Countryside. Okay, so we got some different answers coming in about where you prefer to live. I think me myself, if I could,、uh, if I could have my my dream situation, I would have. A house in the city and a house in the countryside, and I could kind of go back and forth because I do like both. Oh, I see. Okay, someone here has said,、uh, 
because of the lack of driving skills, I love to live in the town. I can go around with buses, taxi, MRT, et cetera. Okay, that's a very interesting point. If you don't like driving, or if you're not very good at driving, obviously living in the countryside would be a problem for you because there's not a lot of public transportation. Countryside, countryside, both. I would like to stay in town because it's more convenient than the countryside. Okay. Town is more convenient. Okay, so it seems like we're getting quite a mixture of answers from the people who are tuned in here. How about you? Me? Yes. People say well, that in the United States, the rich, the rich men, they mostly tend to live in the countryside, and the, probably the average income or low income people will live in the city. Is that true? Um, I actually would have to say no. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think you know the United States is a big country, right? So it's kind of there's different situations in different areas. Um. But I would say, for example, in my hometown in Seattle, um, you need quite a bit of money to be able to live in the city. Um, for example, um, an apartment in Seattle, like a one bedroom apartment is probably going to be, uh, I think probably like at least $1,500 a month, U.S. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. apartment. It's quite expensive. It's actually in the United States, it's cheaper to live in a more countryside area, definitely. Mm -hmm. But how about the Georgetown? They say in the Georgetown, most of the, the people they live there are not a higher income. Georgetown. Yeah, do you know Georgetown nearby? Washington DC or nearby? It's on the eastern side. Oh, you mean the neighborhood in Washington DC? Yes. Oh man, I really don't know. I've never been to Washington DC. And I'm not <laughs> I'm from I'm from the other Washington. Okay. I'm not really familiar with it. What is that DC means? Uh, District of Columbia. Of Columbia. Columbia的特区 好像過去也不見得全部都是這樣 it depends on it depends on the city uh, you know 不同的城市有不同的風格 Seattle for example right now has a lot of very uh, high paying jobs in Seattle because of company, mm, because of companies like Microsoft Amazon a lot of Apple 而公民手法又干净的走。这个不是我这样讲，很多人你一进，你如果从台湾飞美国进关，你如果常常从洛杉矶进内通关，或者你就尝试了一次到西雅图，感觉是完全不一样，完完全全不一样。Okay, let's continue. We'll talk about some more resources. We're running low on time but i also if you're interested in reading news i wanted to introduce this website to you i think this website is actually pretty cool um it's called breakingnewsenglish.com and the thing that's cool about this website is that they update all of the latest news um you know so it's not it's not old news articles it's things that are happening now and then you can also see on the top of their page here, they have every article that they put out. They have six different versions, six different levels. Level zero being the simplest English and level six being the most advanced English. So you can choose which level you think is best for you. 
reading each article. And usually the articles will be level four through six, or they'll be level zero through three. Um, so I think this website is a really great way to practice your English reading and be able to kind of customize your English reading practice. And it's also a great way to stay up on things that are happening in the world, stay up with the latest news. It's a really cool website. And I've selected one article from this website. Um, so before I ask you to read the article, and it's very, very short, it's only two paragraphs, okay? And it's also level zero. So this will be the most simple English, okay? Um, the comprehension questions before you read this article, you can see here, the first one is, what is Alexa? The second question is, what can Alexa do now? The third question is, who will be helped by this new feature? And the last question is, what are some reasons people are worried about Alexa giving this kind of advice? Okay, so I realize you haven't read the article yet, but after you read the article, I think you should be able to answer all of these questions. Now, you can see here below, I've given you the link if you would like to go directly to the article, but I'm also copy and pasted the article onto my next slide. You can see here, okay? So I'm gonna let everyone look at the questions again for just a moment. And then you can choose what you want to do. You can click on the link to go to the article directly yourself, or I'm going to switch to the next slide just so you can read it directly on our broadcast. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to switch to the next slide now so you can read it if you want to on here. Or like I said, you can click on the link directly go to the website. And we'll leave it here for, you know, just a couple minutes. I don't think it should take anyone much longer than that. So everyone, you can answer whenever you're ready. We'll wait for your answers. And Professor Wen has also just uh, copy and pasted the questions into the group chat, so you can see them there also. This thing, the Alexa, it's like the 
they call it like a little voice assistant, you know, that you can have in your house. Oh, okay. With the, you send to Yeah, it you can have AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have AI. Xiaomi also is making one now, too. Okay. I saw at a, at a convention several months ago. Xiaomi also. It's quite one. popular right now, I think. Yeah. I would never use one, though. I wouldn't have one in my home. In our exhibition in Taipei, I think this is the top sales for the for the AI. Oh yeah. We call music box so or anyway, some box AI box. You done? Out, huh? Hmm. The first is virtual assistant. Virtual assistant. That's right. That's actually. The exact language that they use in the news article. Um, so the virtual assistant sometimes is also called like a voice assistant or like a. It's an example of of AI of artificial intelligence. It's Alexa is it's a computer, but it's hooked up to a speaker and it has a voice. You can ask Alexa questions and she'll answer for you. You can also program Alexa to. Uh, control certain functions in your home, like the temperature, the lights, security system, etc. He刚才讲的就是智慧音箱，其实这两年在台北的呃多媒体展展示，那最多人买的就是这个智慧音箱。那这智慧音箱你可以跟他讲，他刚才有说可以帮你做很多事情，像室内温度的调节，还有。Anything else? Temperature or um, what kind of things? All kinds of things. I mean, it also depends on on how connected your house is. You know, there's, okay, the control system. Yes, there's some um, people say it's the house advice. Health advice. Yes, that's correct. That's what the article says. Um, the article is basically describing that the Amazon, the company that produces Alexa, they've cooperated with the health service in the United Kingdom to use the, the database of doctor's advice so that people, instead of going to see a doctor, they can ask questions to their Alexa and the Alexa will provide them with the health advice. That's so just give the house advice. Now, instead of the go to see the doctor, you can ask the questions for the Alexa. Mm. And then it will answer uh, some kind of consultant to give you the suggestion or that's correct. the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, I'm sorry for having to rush, but we... Uh, we're supposed to finish this lesson up by 3.30, so we are only have a few minutes left. Um, but I do want to sh also share some other things with you guys, just a couple more things before we need to uh, continue to the second part of our, uh, of our lesson today, or of our, of our broadcast. Um, I will say before I continue, the thing that people are really concerned about, and I see some of you um, answering this, is that there, there's a large concern for privacy and information security when you're sharing your health information with something like Alexa. Um, I don't know about all of you out there, but I certainly would not. <laughs> I certainly would not give any health information to a uh, to a, a robot person in my house, but that's just me. Okay, like I said, sorry for having to speed up, but um, we're on sort of a time limit here. I um, I would encourage everyone, Professor Wen will post this PPT to the Facebook page later, so you can check out this link, which is just a list of 10 easy English books that this website is recommending. Um, everyone can read. I can't personally recommend all of the books on this list, but I would say um, number four, The House on Mango Street, and then number eight, The Giver, are both books that I've read and I think are 
are good books, um, not only to practice your English reading, but also just good reads. Okay. 他这边有十个建立你要读的书本。他说第四个，他建议各位去读，还有第八个 ，The Giver。它不仅仅是为了要提升你的英语能力，而且可以让各位吸收新知。Anyway， 它就是一个阅读的、阅读的这个欣赏。嗯，那这个投影片我已经放在我们第七周 Google Classroom 里面的课文。课文各位可以看到有一条，那我就已经把第第六周、第七周的投影片都已经加进去了。如果各位在看。课程没有看到他，可以跟我讲。不过我们现在一定要做一件事，如果我们还有时间，再请那个 Matthew 回来讨论一下，还有什么他要讲的。比如说，他有准备一些哦、uh, apps 来告诉各位、嗯，也可以学英文的。我不知道我们有没有时间，但我们现在必须要做一件事。呃，我们一定要在三点半哦去做这里，请各位去看到我们的课程在这里，我先把它收过来。第一个就是在我们的。聊天室或者呃，其实在这个聊天室里面就我有贴今天的问题，那我马上找一下各位去回答今天的问题。好，在聊天室里面就有了。哎，聊天室在这里，有 Alex， 然后就点这里，好就来了啊。聊天室里面上面各位可以慢慢找一下，可以找到有奖真答，有奖真答在哪里啊？好，这是第一个有奖征答，各位应该都知道哈。还有就是从这里可以打有奖征答，我从这里也可以找有奖征答。我记得我有贴在上面，那这个都要花一点时间。各位应该比我厉害了，有奖征答，因为每一周各位都有找出来有奖征答，这个都要浪费一点点时间，但是一定要做的征答。我们很感谢那个黄柏林议员，我有跟他讲说，因为很多老师他要听两个小时的英文，对他来讲是很痛苦的事。那我们为了留住这些老师、校长、主任们，然后我们希望他能够提供奖品。然后好，好，没问题，他就跟我们提供了每一周都有一个平板电脑。好，这个就有掌声打了哈。我把链接再贴一次，贴在右边。那各位可以从右边这个链接。哦，从右边这链接，如果有 copy 到的，帮我们贴在那个，呃，刚才那个影音的右右右边，好不好？因为我现在在做另外一个界面。哦，如果你们有，请帮忙一下，把这个链接贴到右边。那你就点这个有奖征答，因为我现在也是用在另外一部电脑。哈、哦，知道有扣到的，请贴到右边这边来，这就有奖征答。那我们还是希望有奖征答的老师们。我想，张老师们，你必须要是有报名我们课程。我刚才有说，我们有七百位 FV 的呃社团的成员，但真正 log into 我们 Google Classroom 的报名的人很多哈。但是进入 Google Classroom 目前报名大概五六百人了哈，但是进入 Google Classroom 才三百多。那我现在陆陆续续把它加进来，好，把它加进来。那现在答案在这里。那我们的 question 是 ，You want to read that? Sure. The question is, uh. In should say in the week seven article,、uh, there are four tips for improving your English reading. We went over these at the beginning of today's lesson, at the beginning of today's presentation. So I would like you to answer the question: What are the four reading tips that I shared with you at the beginning of today's lesson? That's our question for today. One平板電腦是很多錢喔。好,有獎 真達的鏈結,我沒有抠起來,再抠一次。有奖征答的链接，好，我要贴在右边哦。这个就是我们有奖征答的链接，右边这里，现在右边下面这个就有打有奖征答链接。我们给各位一点点时间
，现在时间三点四、三点三十四分。好，那各位慢慢的、慢慢的去回答，没有关系，你慢慢填，我们不会马上抽奖，至少有十分钟的时间给各位去填答。那答案 ，Would you help us to show the four answers of this one? You do have that in your PPT. The four tips. Yes. 哦，答案出来了，快点偷看一下，偷看答案。<笑> OK， 嗯、欸，很感谢各位校长、主任、老师们哈的配合了哈。我知道要听两个小时的英文哈，嗯、呃，有些人是说问老师不需要翻译，因为他们就是要练习嘛哈。但是我有问一些人，他没有翻译，他没有办法听在这里，一共一个文件的照啊，一共一动没掉。所以还是啦哈啊，那因为大家都会去看，我相信，因为我们重读的比例很高，那个重读的几率几乎你去看都四五百，四五百个人在看，四五百次的人次，所以还是有帮助的啦哈。那这门课程其实是我老师的一个梦，就希望能够协助我们高雄市的教育圈里面去去呃实践英语学习的习惯。你看看在美国 English。Is a lifeline, 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 and 生命线。所以，嗯，我们这一代如果不讲，下一代没就就就比较没有机会说。尽量好坏不重要，有学最重要。啊，这个课程我不会关哈、哦，这个课程我们就继续下去的。下个礼拜我们要邀请的是高师大的那个 Orlando 教授呵呵。那很多人认识，我相信这边很多都是他的学生。目前现场应该有一堆都是、啊、那个那个。o r l a n d o 他名字应该叫他好像叫叫 Steven o r l a n d o 什么？哎，那我们下礼拜是邀请他了啊，他讲的也是影音的阅读哈啊、呃，就是呃，我也要我也要他再多带一个礼物过来，好，好，那各位现在就慢慢在读啊哈 ，So OK， do you want to introduce the five uh tour or yes A B K？ I will. Yes. While、well, you guys are maybe inputting your answer for that question. Um, I'll just share with you very quickly.、Um, the last thing that I want to share with you today is about using language apps. Okay, so there are many, many, many language apps that you can download.、Um, however, a lot of them are not really that good. Okay,、um, so I found this video on YouTube. Um, where this guy, the host, is reviewing five language learning apps. So these apps, of course, help you with your, you know, your listening and your reading, and some of them even with your speaking. They give you tools to remember new vocabulary and opportunities to practice your language. Okay, so I believe this video is about four minutes long. I think less than four minutes. So you can have a look, have a watch, and the five apps that are introduced in this video are these here: Busu, Memorize, Hello Talk, Fluent U, and the last one is Duolingo. Okay.、Um, so let's watch the video now,、uh, and after that, I'll ask you a question, and I'll, I'll also tell you about the language app that I use most often. Okay. Here we go. Or can you copy the link into the okay the chat room? Okay. This one. This one. Yeah. Okay. Professor is giving you the link now. So there you have it, and we're gonna watch it here. Like I said, it's about I think three minutes and some change. Language learning is not only a great exercise for our brain and a good way to make friends. Sometimes it can also be really important. Fuego, fuego, Alex, corre, hay un incendio, se está quemando todo, hay que huir. 
that's Tony. He speaks Spanish. I never have any idea what he's saying. Not now, Tony. We're recording. As I was saying, sometimes learning a language can be the difference between life and death. So today, we're going to look at five apps to help you learn a foreign language. Can you stop burning? <laughs> is an app that applies modern language learning techniques to a more traditional class-based structure. It divides its course into different lessons, each focusing on a different theme. Each lesson includes vocabulary, pronunciation, and examples with explanations. To top things off, Busu offers quizzes to test your knowledge and the ability to create flashcards for reference. Of course, one of the biggest obstacles to learning a foreign language is remembering all of the vocabulary, which is where Memorize comes in. First, you set a target for learning 5, 15, or 30 words every day. Memorize then presents you with the words, their pronunciations, and examples of their usage. But the app's focus is on rooting the word permanently in your head, which it does by constantly feeding your memory through repetition. To learn a language, it's important to use it, preferably with a native speaker, which is exactly the service HelloTalk offers. It's basically WhatsApp for language learners. All you have to do is set your native language, the language you want to learn, and your interests. Then the app will find people for you to chat to. You can use text, audio messages, and voice calls to communicate, so you never have to feel forced into chatting if you're embarrassed. Hello Talk even features an internal translator for when you get stuck, and group chat. Fluent U is perhaps the most entertaining way to learn a foreign language. Just pick a language, then sit back and watch videos recorded in the dialect of your choice. When playing the video, you can see each word written on screen, allowing you to read them and see how they're pronounced by a native speaker simultaneously. Fluent U also lets you reference the meaning of words in app to help you review and memorize them. The Duolingo app in conjunction with the online service is perhaps the best way to learn a second language. With Duolingo, you can learn any one of its 15 languages for free, starting at a novice level and moving all the way through to its advanced classes. What makes it so good is how it gamifies learning, converting exercises into bite-sized games for you to enjoy and earn points to raise your total score. All the while focusing on developing your skills with tasks like pronunciation, listening comprehension, grammar, and vocabulary retention. You see, all you need to learn a foreign language is a mobile phone and a lot of perseverance. Next week, I'll be back with apps that change your voice. If you have any recommendations, be sure to let us know in the comments. Until then, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. They do have big band there about the five apps, okay? So uh, I realized the, the host in that video was talking quite quickly. Um, but anyway, he gave you a quick idea of these five apps that are all different, but they can all be used to help you uh, learn a foreign language. Um, me, myself, I use the Duolingo app, and I use it for uh, Spanish, Japanese, German, and I actually even use it for Chinese, too, because um, the Duolingo Chinese uses simplified characters, which I'm trying to get better at reading simplified characters now. So I use it for all of those languages, and I think it's pretty cool. Um, so let's see what some of you are oh, saying here. Yes. Uh, she says that. So that my someone here says my son likes Duolingo. It's interesting for kids. And then he suggested my daughter try that app. Uh, what's the next person say? I've learned a lot of information from this class. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. You, <laughs> you've learned a lot. Thanks. Um, so yeah, these. These apps are all, um, you know, accessible through your app store, whether you have uh, Android or whether you run iOS. So um, I would encourage you, if you're interested, to check them out. Um, the only one of these that I'm really personally familiar with is the Duolingo, which I, like I just said, I use, well, I use it every day um, for different languages. And I think it's quite, quite useful. I actually think I've learned quite a bit using the Duolingo. Okay, so those are five language learning apps that you can check out. Um, and now I think 
we should probably return to our uh, question of the day and also do our lottery yes. to see who is going to win a tablet. And Presently, going... we have 43 okay. teachers' response to our questions. So, we are in 3 但真正进来的人，因为他不会，有些人没有听的在这里，有些人不是会喜欢来抽奖哦，有些了哈，因为他给一个麦的主持了，阿佩不会哦，你们就进来。我们等一下会抽的奖哈，当然，呃，现在我
从一号一号是王伯芬。然后一直到四十三号，哦，我们还有四十四号呢，所以事实上是四十四个人，嗯，我要重新乱一次哈、哦，这样才比较公平。伯芬把它放在四十四号，不好意思，他刚才是在一号，我就把它重来一次哦，多了一个人。好，那我们现在还要再乱一次哦哈，在 random number 里面我们重新乱一次，在这个要让四十四个，好，四十四多了一个人。哦，有了，一到四十四。复制 Ctrl C， 再把它丢回到这里来，必须从第一号，第一号。好，那我再重新排序一次。下面这一个，哦，这样可以的了哈。到四十三到现在没有错了，我这个就把它拿掉，这个都没有用。我们刚才贴了两次，没有关系，我把这个杀掉。好，现在每个人都有号码，其实是到四十三号，没关系。到四十三号，我再把它重排一次哦，重新排列。好。那号码都在这里了 ，OK。现在开始我们要乱数哦，我们先抽三个，刚才那个附加奖，好，先抽三个。等一下我们再来对这个答案，我要先把它存一下。第七周的已经存起来了 ，OK。所以我们去做那个 lottery， 就在这里，然后到这里来，这里已经登出。不重要吧？我们在诸位学校里面要抽三位哦，好、哦，抽三位。那号码到四十三号，对不对？刚才到四十三，有有 ，forty three， 好，那我们就开始了哦，因为时间不多了，抽三个。Okay. Yep. One, two, three. I will take down the number. This one right here. Yep. Yes. 好，第一个，这个都是刚才那个 Matthew 带来的珍贵的奖品，二十九号。Twenty nine. 下一个。Six. 十六。下一个。九号。好，接下来我们要抽。Grand prize. Grand prize. Okay. 那个叫 Grand prize. Okay. Okay. Comes the grand prize. 最大奖。Nineteen. Nineteen 十九。好，我们今天十九号就得平板了。我们还不知道名字嘛？哈，我会把它记起来。各位看一下哈，这个应该不会错。但是各位必须要那个哦，要回来要通关密语哦，就写我得奖了就好了。通关秘语，我得奖了，我也不知道是谁。第一个得到附加奖是二十九号，二十九要看这个哈，不是看左边的，看这一个。二十九号是这一个，这叫什么？陈玉妮，请你写一下二十九号哦，哈，是我们重新分配的陈玉妮，是得到的附加奖。陈玉妮，我把它记起来。然后第二个是十六号，曾玉慧，曾玉慧附加奖，曾玉慧，哇，他对我们课程特别用心呐、啊。哎呀，他说这个得奖得的太快了，要完了，等一下那个不是更好吗？下一个是九号，九号，九号，九号，啊 ，no no， that's one， should be that's one， 九号是谁哈？九号是黄黄立满，哎、欸，立满上一次有得过了，没关系，这只是小奖而已。立满又得奖，那这只是小奖哈、哦，我们不好意思把它拿掉。黄立满又得奖了
啊，我会把那个奖品去送给各位哈，想办法把这个项目送给各位。除了那个以外，我有附加一个小奖在里面，所以各位就等吧，我把奖品送给你们哈。那现在再来就是得到我们今天平板的是第十九号，陈立业有得奖了，必须要写我得奖了哦，一定要。哎，十九号有啊，陈立业那么快啊！那么快呀、啊！雷梦就是立满呐、啊，立满第二次得奖。今年阿基玛一共两个啊，立满还有一个就是立月。今年今年我得奖了，今年要在上面写我得奖了。今年得奖了还有谁？曾玉慧，玉慧，阿、啊、称也有了。玉慧我们在等你，我得奖了。今年、啊、我会想办法把东西送给你。议会，进来，他刚才在线上，各位可以看到上面的哦，他得奖了，<笑>好吧，又有贴的啦哈，好，他有得奖的，那我们今天三个得奖的，我们除了刚才那个奖以外，我会附加另外一个小奖在里面，哦，那因为因为立满，因为立满他上一次有得奖也是不是大奖了，所以我不好意思说让他没有得了哈。好，如果是平板，那当然就不能重录了。好、哦，非常感谢各位，我们时间到三点五十五分，我也一直 remind 那个那个 Mac 呃，那个 Matthew says that we got to stop at the three thirty for this lottery. Otherwise, we don't have time. 啊，因为他必须要有时间让你们填答，让我们抽奖。不过刚才他也已经把那个 OK， 刚才他已经把他的那个 APP APK 也都介绍了哈。那各位一定要好好去看，我告诉各位，我真的很用心，我去安排那个数位双语，大家一起说的 F 一那个网站，那我渐渐的会把它移到我们的平台回来。那这一些都很值得各位读，因为我一面看呢，一面很高兴说，哦，有这么好的东西，那些小毛头呢，都只有二十来岁，你知道吗？讲那个英文，他们因为都是在国外长大，讲那个啊，不过我们请来的几个教授里面，我非常感谢那个那个世修了哈 ，Matthew。他他其实是会讲中文啦、啊，但我就跟他讲说，尽量不要在这里讲中文了、啊，让我来讲哈、哦。那因为我们这个就是请外籍老师的用意，就是要听听，而且他的英文超好听的。他的英语你怎么看？跟上面我有跟其中的某一个老师沟通过了，他说跟我们在听那个站台的主播在讲的英文，他都是嗯哎呀，就是语调适中，而且语气也非常清晰，所以我们非常感谢他。那我还是要叮咛各位，第一点就是我们现在在 Google Classroom 大约有三百五十个人，希望各位好不好？我们在站上的有进入 FB 的，就邀请他们务必要进到我们的课程来，这是第一点，因为我们会写结案报告嘛，希望 Google Classroom 人不要太少。而且你进到 Google Classroom， 你有缴交作业，那个作业都很简单，一个就是阅读语音，然后阅读语音当然，呃，不用太在意了，我们会尽量就是重观认定，好啊。第二个就是那个。呃、欸、，ED Puzzle 的账号我已经登登进来了，所以好像你不用申请，我都帮你申请完了。那第二个就是你必须要去念读，如果你真的没有时间念读，你就把档案给我们吧。好，但我还是希望各位念读，因为有很多学习是必要的过程啊。但它可能有一点累，时间是三点五十八分，我们快要结束了。Do you have anything want to say to all our members online? Uh, just thank you. I guess if you if you tuned in uh for my lesson last week, thank you. If you tuned in for the lesson today, thank you. If you tuned in for both of them, thank you, thank you. Uh, I like I said last week, I've never done this kind of online teaching before, but I've actually really enjoyed it. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, to be able to communicate with so many people who are all in. All over Taiwan,、uh, just with the system that Professor Wen has set up.、Um, but beyond that, I hope that if you have watched my lessons last week and this week, my real hope is that you learned something, or that I introduced some resources to you that are going to help you in studying English and learning English yourself.、Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in, and also just. Encourage everyone to continue in your English learning. I think it's something really, really worthwhile. And just thanks so much. 好，谢谢啦，谢谢啦。我们都啪啪啪哦，网络的战鼓掌方法。好
。好了，那就谢谢了，我把语音关掉了，拜拜。你要看一下，拜拜。等一下，我跟你说拜拜，进来了，拜拜。呀呀呀，我在这里，我在这里。<笑>很感谢有人来听，我就很高兴了啊！请各位，如果校长、主任、老师们去鼓励你们学校老师进来学，我东西不会关掉。那个、那个数位学语的东西，我真的花了很多时间整理，请各位了解，我真的花很多时间，所以我希望对高雄的双语教学有很大的帮助。我要把那个语音关掉了哈，我关掉以后你就听不到我的声音喽。